Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, but we're going to go ahead and start off by doing a little bit more digital stuff. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a um, little bit of demonstration more so of using WinMore with WinLink Express in order to send emails over HF. So uh, this is actually a really cool capability uh, because using just the HF transceiver as long as you're able to reach a gateway somewhere to the internet, uh, which there are abundance of, you will be able to send and receive email from uh, HF. So that's super cool. Um, I've been playing around with it here just enough to kind of show you guys how to get started with it and to find some stations that I can connect to. Uh, one that I just found that worked really well for me was one out of Texas, and I'm in Kentucky. So uh, it's a really robust system, really. Uh, there's uh, some error handling there. So, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. And I'm going to go ahead and provide the link down below uh, to download WinLink Express, which is the software that we're using to uh, form this demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and open up WinLink Express. And by default, I'll just go through the setup again. By default, you're going to see something like this. You guys see my password here. That's going to have to change, obviously. Uh, well, I'll just blur it out in the video. So you need to put in your call sign, your password, and you can put your email address. Um, you need to put your grid square, and uh, you'll hit update. And what's going to happen is that kind of stores your information in the system. And if this is your first time, uh, obviously that doesn't go anywhere until you actually connect to a server for the first time. So this is the uh, the main window of the program. So this is the uh, the main window of the program, and I'm going to put. Um, well, I'll just show you guys first. So if you go into settings, uh, you can modify. Uh, some basic setup stuff. Um, really, it works pretty well out of the box here. There's not much you, you need to do. Um, if you ever need to set something up again, like we just did, you can just go to WinLink Express Setup, and that really takes care of you. Uh, the next thing I'm going to really talk about is the uh, the open session and um, kind of how to send an email. So the first time you open a session uh, after you create your account there, it's going to authenticate with the server. Now, if you're connected to an in the internet, uh, you can use Telnet to open that session, and um, that's really going to it's going to be just like you're connected to a radio terminal, and, but it's going to be over the internet. So you can select it and hit Open Session. Really recommend doing this. Um, let's see what am I doing wrong here open session oh you need to scroll up sorry the first telnet there not peer-to-peer uh, -peer. so we'll go ahead and open that session I recommend you do it this way the first time because it's pretty much a guaranteed link you don't have all the iffy stuff that you have with HF so I didn't really have anything going on on the server if I had an email waiting for me it would have got me one or if I needed to send one out it would have sent one out you guys are going to see something different if this is the first time that you've actually ran the program uh, because it, you'll receive password notifications, stuff like that, because it's getting you registered in the system. Uh, so the next thing I'll kind of talk about is the client itself. This is pretty much an email client, so it's kind of self-explanatory. If you want to create a new message, you can create a new message uh, by hitting the, the paper up here. And just for a demonstration here, I'm going to first go ahead and uh, put my computer into airplane mode. So as you guys can see, I have no communications besides a audio uh, interface going out to my radio. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my radio on. I'm going to turn that down. Some radios on and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, type up an email message. So. I'm going to type it up to my Gmail address and I'm going to put radio test in the subject and I'm going to do testing the radio and uh, once you get your message typed up 
you can hit post to outbox now the way this client uh, is going to work here is it's going to put your message in the outbox so it's saying okay this message is ready to be sent it's queued it won't go anywhere until you open a session now obviously uh, if we try to open a session now over the telnet win link it's not going to work because we're no longer connected to the internet boom you, you don't have an internet connection obviously so the only way we're going to get this message out is if we go over HF and uh, send it out that way so the way we're going to do that and you, there's two different ways well there, actually there's many different ways but this channel's focus on that budget remember so we can use the uh, win more uh, win link protocol here and what that's going to do is pretty much it's a digital I guess you could say a digital TNC it does all the encoding decoding for us so we don't need an external modem uh, back 10 20 years ago you would need the Pactor modem and those are still upload upwards of one to two thousand dollars but it's kind of convenient now we can actually use uh, this is the uh, the software to send a message so we don't really need anything besides the interface to the radio and the computer with the client running so this allows you to send and receive email messages you know if you're completely off the grid somewhere all you gotta do is throw a tana in a tree and uh, you can send and receive email messages that includes attachments and uh, as you know you can also send email addresses uh, by using email you can also text people um, so it's a very versatile system and you're able to do a lot of things with it so we're going to go ahead and open our session and it's going to pull up a window like this so what you see here is a waterfall display of the receive end of your radio you have a connection state uh, and you have some other uh, status here the first thing you want to do is go to settings and hit your uh, win more TNC setup just make sure that your capture device and playback device uh, is set appropriately for the audio interface you're using on your computer. Uh, the inbound session bandwidth uh, will vary for the station that you're connecting to. I recommend choosing one with the 1600 hertz um, just because they, they seem more abundant. Uh, your drive level is just pretty much your transmit power. If you've ever used any digital modes, you know that you'll need to adjust this to make sure that your automatic level control in your radio doesn't kick in. I did a whole video about that uh, a few months ago, so if you're interested in trying to figure out what your drive level should be, you should check that out. So once that's set up, uh, the next thing you should go to is your radio setup. And uh, really, there's not much going on here. Uh, if you want to use the push to talk port, you can set it up. If you want to use a radio control port, you can set it up. Or you can't do. You can just not do any of those things. I myself, I like to use um, a digital box because I am very careful about making sure that only what needs to go out on the radio goes out. I don't have any the window sounds um, or really any of that. So. You can set that up if you like, or you can just kind of fill it in and put none on everything. It just kind of depends on what setup you're running there. So you can also do a transmit level test. If you hit this, it's going to send out a beacon on your radio. You can look on it, make sure you're uh, putting out the appropriate power without that automatic level control kicking in. And so once you have that, the next thing you want to do is go to channel selection. Now. I don't want to do, I, it might ask if you'd like to, it's, all, it's really only asking me this because I was running it earlier. I'm going to hit no on this. So what this is, is a very cool list of all the stations that are running these gateways. Um, and it will arrange them for you based on the current radio wave propagation and determining the best stations that you have most likely chance of connecting to. Now this can take some time to go through and, and, and select one that works best for you. I found two or three that work for me, um, but I'm still trying to find one without errors. Uh, right now, the one in Texas is the one that works well for me. So what I did was I just simply went through this list. I would select the station, um, and it's going to pop up center frequency, a dial frequency, and the varying and quality. 
I, you need to change your radio dial frequency to the dial frequency. You should have that in your radio. So if I was going to try to connect to this uh, Whiskey One Echo Oscar, I would need to make sure that my radio, as you can see, is set to, um, well, 1 or 7101. So I would change that to 7101. And uh, it will be ready to go. One thing to note is make sure that your radio is in the uh, upper sideband. Uh, that's really the only requirement. You need to make sure you're in upper sideband. Different radios have different data settings. Uh, some of them have special data settings, and you can put that in your software. It just kind of depends. I'm using Simple Digital Box, so I'm just going to go ahead and just throw it on USB. It doesn't need to be on data USB because it's going to be the same thing for me. So after that, the next thing that you would do is hit start and it's going to transmit and attempt to uh, contact one of those stations. So I'm going to turn my volume up. And I'm going to go ahead and abort. Okay. Oh, so we actually, never mind. So we're already receiving packets. I didn't expect to actually be able to connect to that station because I didn't earlier. Okay, well, it's a, it's a little, it's a little iffy. So I'm gonna go ahead and abort. That data is actually looking pretty good, but. So what you see here on this waterfall is this is the data coming in uh, and it's trying to connect back to me but I just aborted um, because I know that this station is not going to work well for me. So I'm going to, what I recommend you do is just go through these stations and attempt to find one that does work well for you. And I found here one at Whiskey 5 Kilo Alpha Mike. So what I'm going to do is first change that station to something else so I don't have to listen to that. I'm going to throw that Whiskey 5 Kilo Alpha Mic in there and then I'm going to throw my frequencies that I copied and honestly I don't know if this actually matters but I'm going to throw it in there anyways. I think really all that matters is it's in your radio but uh, I'm going to throw it in there just in case. Seven one oh two. Okay, I'm struggling. Seven one oh four. Seven one oh two five. Bearing two thirty five. So I have it in the software. I'm going to make sure that I throw it up here on the radio. Seven one oh two five. And I'm going to go ahead and hit start. I'm going to minimize this so we can see the waterfall. So we're getting, it's not a super clean signal, but it's definitely better than the last one we're getting. And you can probably hear the radio too. Each time it fires, uh, transmits, uh, it sends a packet back. So it's pretty efficient at um, communicating and not using too much bandwidth at a time. So as you can see, we are connected um, to the station and we have a certain amount of time before it's going to disconnect us. And this, what you see here is it's uh, going to send my message out that I have in my outbox. So that's literally what it's doing now. It's, it's just sending my message. So there's a lot of uh, checks here to make sure that everything goes well so if the packet doesn't send right it's going to resend it uh, and stuff like that so that way it ensures that your data gets through so it can take a few moments to ensure that your email message comes through and I'm just going to pull up my gmail on uh, 
another computer here. Okay, so it says message is sent, as you can see. It's sent my message, obviously, and now it's just disconnecting because we have nothing further to do. And when it disconnects, it's going to send your ID. Um, okay, and he sent his message, his ID out. And so now I'm just going to pull up my email on another computer and try to sort it so you guys don't see my whole email list. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the camera over. And I've got a few emails uh, for myself because I've been testing, but you, see, you can see the one that's at uh, 2.07 a.m. This is the one that we uh, just created, uh, and it just says testing the radio. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit compose and send myself an email right back at that address and I'm going to say subject hi and I'm going to say hi one two three right and I'm going to go ahead and send that message now we're back over on the computer out of work maybe Alright, we're back out over at the computer and we're not really connected to a session right now so we're not going to receive that message. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit start and it's going to reconnect to that node. Okay. And once it reconnects that node, that node uh, gets a message, hey this guy's got an email, why don't you just go ahead and forward it to him since you're connected and it shoots me over that email. And you're going to see that uh, data come through. It's going to occupy a little bit more bandwidth. And it's going to sound a little different over the radio. Um, but just give it a moment here. Once it does its, um, its talking and it's, it's does its handshake here, it's going to see that I have an email message. So I think that's what this right here is. Uh, and you should start seeing receiving here soon. It shouldn't take long because I don't. I forgot. I just even forgot what I just typed. But is in sending state so it's still kind of talking with the radio to see what's going on we're just going to give that just one moment so we're getting a big chunk of data it's probably the start of my email uh, I forgot to mention what you want to see here is a nice little defined X I mean that's the best received quality okay you want that just a nice defined X. Alright, so I can see the email right here is coming through. It says uh, hi as a message. Um, so right now it's sending that message. That's what this waterfall is right here. It, it, it's occupying much more bandwidth as you can see. And there's a different sound on the radio there. So this should finish up here soon. It says in receiving state. Um, you can see right here. It's on a huge email, so it shouldn't take um, very long at all to come through. But you got to imagine this is a very robust system. It's a lot of packet error handling. Um, so it, it it's going to take a longer time because it wants to make sure that all that data comes through correctly. Uh, so you know everything's got to be verified. So. Let's just give this just a moment here. Okay. 
So it looks like it's receiving. This is it's just still exchanging data here, so we should be about finished up. Okay, so in our inbox, we see that we have one unread, and hi uh, is our subject, and hi123 was our message. So as you can see, uh, we have just sent and received a message over HF radio, and uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but the, uh, the station I'm contacting here is out of Texas. I'm in Kentucky, so that's quite, it's quite a bit of ways away to get that much data through. So uh, that's just super cool. Uh, it's a, it's a nice way to I guess be able to send data if you're off the grid somewhere and you're not you don't even have access to a cell phone or uh, you know any of that. You're still able to get text messages out, emails out using this software. So really cool concept. Uh, it works you know, pretty well. Uh, and if you guys haven't checked it out, I definitely uh, recommend doing so. Uh, not sure if it would come come in handy in the future, but maybe you know during a disaster and stuff like that, it'd be good for emergency personnel to be able to uh, communicate with each other still. But uh, you know, thank you guys for watching. I know this this might be a little dry. I'm kind of getting back into the videos, so. Let me know what you think down below, your criticisms and con, con, blah, comments, and make sure you subscribe to the channel because there are going to be uh, many more videos on the way.